Good to see everybody. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Bald Avenger Show. I am Jason Cisneros, also known as the Bald Avenger, the tattooed guru, the purveyor of all things common sense, the king of the misfit nation, and a legend, baby. In my own mind, Darren, in my own mind, okay? I have to throw that in there. I have to throw that in there. What's up, Ruben? Good to see you, brother. Um, you guys are in for a great show uh, tonight. I met this gentleman. God, how long has it been ago? Like in dog years, it was like 50 years ago in COVID years, right? <laughs> yeah. It just blends <laughs> together. I have no idea. It's, it seems like it's been forever. It feels like it's been forever. It, but I, I think it was, it was this year, right? At the beginning yeah. of the year? Yeah, in Dallas, Texas. Dallas, uh, Texas. You, you throw an event down there um, for our wonderful, amazing – I mean, I know you do it for, for your industry – but uh, part of the reason that we were there was to raise money for the Warrior Horse and uh, Kevin, our, our beautiful human being that we love and adore. Um, you know, that was, it was an amazing event and I uh, was really impressed with the quality of the people that were there. Um, you and I connected. Uh, I got to hear your story from stage. And uh, for those of you, we'll come back to this at the end, but he wrote this book. It's a little bit of a shine on it. Uh, back to Bulletproof, a Warrior's tactical guide to success tactical we need to make sure that that, that part is in there what's up gregory <laughs> welcome to the show um so we're going to talk a little bit today we're going to go through um some of the lessons out of his book as you can see those people don't see me really uh promoting anybody's stuff when i'm when i'm on my own show right uh or other people's stuff except for if it's a charity but i really love this um tell us what the gsd stands for uh, it stands for get shit done. Get shit done. Get shit done. We every, talked about every that. Every day, get shit done. Every damn day. Every damn day. What's up, Danny? Welcome to the show. Good to see everybody. All right. Well, let's just get into it, man. We are we are living in a, a hell of a time right now. You know, I'm I'm excited about it. I started doing shows back when COVID came up, and I started making predictions about you know things that were going to go on and things that were going to happen, and and um, you know unfortunately for myself, a lot of that stuff has come true <laughs> and a lot and unfortunately for the rest of us. But, you know, my, my idea is that preparation, being prepared for things is, is um, a big portion of success. And, um, you know, you have experience in the military. I want you to go through a little bit of that. You have uh, experience in, uh, uh, in business. Um, you have experience in being a leader. You have experience in, in charity, all the stuff that's near and dear to my heart. And, uh, and so let's talk a little bit about that. We'll start out with the book. Give us a little bit of history of who you are, uh, where you're coming from and, and why people should be listening to you today. Well, I decided to write the book after doing several events and a lot of people kept coming up to me and asking me, Hey man, you should write a book because you got a really good story. So the book is about my journey in life, uh, growing up as a kid in Northern New York up in the Adirondack mountains and then going into military, I played hockey my whole life, but I went into the military, I went into the Coast Guard, did search and rescue for a little bit, and then I got into deployable specialized forces, and then was doing counter-narcotics down in South America and Central America. Left that after about eight years and did some government contracting in Southeastern Asia, and uh, got some good stories about that. So, uh, you know, I got with a, a, a co-author of mine, a buddy, and uh, who was a former Navy guy, and we collaborated together because I'm not the best writer. However, I can tell a good story. So he took it all together, put the construction site together, finished off all the brick, and uh, out came the book. And it's been really uh, kicking ass out there. And th the whole point of the book is I want people to read this book. And I, I titled it Back to Bulletproof because I want people to get to their best self. If they're not already there um, or they were never there, find where you want to go and take that challenge and just do it. I love that. I love that. And Bulletproof is, you know, it's interesting, the places that you've been, the things that you've seen, counter narcotics. I mean, that's not, that's not for the faint of heart, right? right. And uh, you tell this story. In fact, I think I have it uh, check, check mark. It. Your, your book is fantastic, by the way. Uh, I'm very selective on the books that I read these days because you, you get repurposed and regurgitated bullshit, you know, from a lot of, from a lot of books. Um, but you talk about this uh, Galapagos takedown 
dropping the hammer on the cartel. Right. Yes. That's and, right. and it's a, it's a really, really interesting story. Why don't you give us just a little bit of oversight on, on, on that story and then why, why it's important in the book. Well, I, I mean, the abridged version of it is we were going after this cartel, Colombian cartel, who was obviously smuggling a shit ton of cocaine into the country. And uh, we had some good intel and we were working off of a U.S. Navy platform off the Galapagos Islands after we were out there probably 45, 50 days on the operation till we decided that it was time to take them down. And uh, we did. And we did it in the wee hours of the morning when they were not prepared for us. They didn't have their six P's ready. And <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, was, uh, it ended up netting about 9.2 tons of cocaine. And uh, it was one of the largest cocaine seizures at the time. Uh, of one single bus coming into the U.S. And even to this day, I think it's still a top 10, but uh, don't quote me on that. But it's a, it's a, it's a lot of cocaine, and a lot of bad guys got uh, arrested. And, uh, you know, it was, it was pretty rewarding, so pretty pumped about it. Lessons I learned in the leadership on that specific operation, um, I brought into other operations and then come into the civilian world. So, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of things you learn in the military that can really help you in the civilian world. Yeah, there really are. And we'll get into your six P's in here in, here in just a second, because I think it's going to be really valuable. If, not, if anybody gets anything out of this, um, having those six P's and how to implement that in your life is really great. But I want to talk, I mean, because it, we run parallel uh, lives, right? I mean, you know, I, I do a lot of the undercover stuff and we, we you know, so we've seen a lot of the same stuff. And, and when I was younger, I was the one that was on the dealing end of, you know, when that, when that cocaine would get, it <laughs> would get right. to the United States. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so what, uh, cause that's a dangerous world, right? You're interrupting like in the world of, of um, um, uh, human trafficking, right? It's, it's, it's the fastest growing crime on the face of the planet. And you right. run into these, um, into these, these uh, bad guys and, and, and then you come out and you, you know, you and I are kind of built the same way. We're like, look, we're going to be advocates for people's businesses. We're going to be advocates for people uh, that are be being traded. We're going to be advocates for people that are, that are suffering, um, you know, in easing suffering in the world. Uh, what, why do you feel so confident in, you know, the work that you've done in the past and now you come out in the future? Because, and I asked that for a specific reason. Most people in this world are not operating at their potential because they have a, this fear of something that they messed up in, they screwed up in their life, they, you know, they, they've got somebody that knows something about them, and so they keep hidden, right? You've got this ultimate potential of who you can become, and then, and then you have where you, most people operate because there's this idea that, oh, I, you know, I cheated in a marriage. I, I got arrested for DUI. I got, we, 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 ha we all have that thing that we're either embarrassed about or that other people know uh, that, that which tamps down our brilliance, right? So talk a little bit, because it's, it's, it's not a, um, a small thing that you come out and you talk about this, that you write about in the book. I mean, because some of these bad guys are still out there. What, what was it that, that you had to overcome? Did you even think about it? And how could people apply that in their regular life? Well, I think going back to you originally, your, the first part of the question when you asked about like people make mistakes, they don't want to talk about it. I was just doing an interview the other day and someone asked me like, what, what mistakes have I learned from in life? And I said, there's too many. I can't, I can't even just tell you one. I mean, maybe if we were sitting at a bar having drinks, one or two will specifically pop up, but there's really too many. But the, the trick is, how do you learn from those mistakes and not do them again? And I made, a, I made a very clear decision to go in the military when I was about 21 years old. I, I went in on March uh, 14th. My birthday's on March 9th, so I just turned 21. Um, I had done the process before that, but um, I made a clear decision that I had to make this decision to better my life. And then when I got in the Coast Guard, then the doors opened up for me doing search and rescue and then going to deploy with specialized forces. So that, that's the, I think you, you have to make a decision that's, that you know is best for you and the people around you. And then you just have to do it. You, you can't sit back and go, what if, you know, you're, if you're a person that has a job and you don't really like your job and you come home every single day and you bitch to your wife or you bitch to your kids or you bitch to your husband and you're complaining, oh, I fucking hate my job. Well, you know what? Do something about it and quit bitching because if you're going to come bitch to me about it, I will help you the first time. And after that, when I hear, mat, 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 it's all I hear. And I'm just like, get out of here because 
you don't want to make those changes for yourself. And that's what we're seeing a lot of in the world right now is <laughs> this professional victimhood. You know, you see people that have, you know, that have had hard times, like, and, and they get, it gets really personal, right? When, when you've built a world where people can, can start to start movements around a personal aggrievement, right? Or I don't even know if that's a word, but a, a personal uh, slight against them and they can start full movements because so many people have had that same, uh, that same slight in their life. And, and they, we start to get away from your six P's, right? We start to get away from it because what victimhood does is say, you, the outside world needs to make uh, adjustments for me, right? And, and so now I'm going to sit back instead of honing our skills, instead of, you know, okay, COVID, COVID, we know uh, it, it, it hits people that are overweight. We, it hits people that, that have heart disease. We have uh, people that, that uh, have diabetes. A lot of these things are preventable, right, by our own activities. Right. And so we're waiting for this magic pill to come out instead of it's right in front of you, right? Go to the gym, eat better, stop drinking, don't smoke. Like do, like do those things that start to build a barrier between you and that thing that may, may attack you. And, and so talk a little bit um, about your six P's and then we'll kind of address the rest of the, the show around, around those things. Well, six P's, proper planning prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> say, it, say it again if anyone's writing that down. Yeah, Proper so let's, let's say it really slow because somebody will pop, type it in there. Ruben, if you don't mind, yeah. if, you, if you wouldn't mind typing it in. Proper planning prevents piss poor performance. Mm. And okay. if you really think about that, so I, I learned it when I was in the military. I learned it when I was in the DSF program. And what we constantly are training to make sure we're prepared for the worst case scenario. At the end of the day, when an operation goes completely smooth, which they barely ever do, but let's just say it goes completely smooth, and then you, you don't sit back and go, well, we didn't need to do all that training. That was easy. It went smooth because of all the training that you did. It's right. the same thing when you drive your car to work every day, or if you're, if you're working on you know, spreadsheets at, for your, you're an accountant, whatever you're doing, if, you're, if you practice it and you, you're prepared for it, when it's time to get on stage and do what you need to do, it's, it makes it much easier. And it, it's, it's a way of life. If you, whether, and I, I'm not saying that you need to be a, um, a prepper where you need to have a garage filled with all kinds of canned food. However, if that's what you want to do and that makes you feel better, go ahead, get all the canned food you want because then you're prepared for the worst. Right. And, and if you want to make sure when there's a hurricane coming that you got to have a full tank of gas, don't talk about it when you're on E going, yeah, I should have went to the gas station, right? You should have basically filled up your, your tank with gas. It's simple things like that, that you right. just need to always be prepared for. Yeah. And, and it's the, you know, we, we look back at, um, you know, on the consulting, my company, uh, Anton Jake uh, Global, the consulting company, the work that we do and have done with our, with, with the companies that we work <laughs> with, it's always preparing for that, right? I mean, how many business owners, like I, I, we know this figure, right? Uh, the average CEO in a company makes $150,000 a year, okay? Everybody thinks that they're these rich, you know, they're, they're all like, you know, driving around in, in Lamborghinis and going to Paris and staying at all these, the average one, and then you have people that are making 8 million. Like, so you know that there's people making less to bring that average down to 150, right? right. And, and so you, so when we talk about um, preparing what we said, what we've done, and one of the first things that we do is we put, we bulletproof um, their uh, a year's worth of performance so that if something comes up, right? So a lot of the companies that we have, uh, that we work with, they were ready for this, not knowing that it was going to be this. Right. And, and then in the midst of that, you can take like one of our, one of our people, um, had a, a car dealership and shifted immediately into these plastic separators and, and that kind of thing while, while that business was kind of taking a hit. And then it came back again. People were buying cars like crazy. And so yeah. during that little dip, and now it's a secondary business, right? Because he was prepared, you know? Yeah. When, when COVID started, uh, I'm, it started before March, but when March started shutting everything down, you know, every, all of my competitors out there were running around going, oh, we're in trouble. We got to lay everyone off. We, we didn't do that at all. What we did is we full steam ahead. We figured out what kind of safety measures that can we, we can put in place that protect 
ourselves, the employees, most importantly, and then the customers, the people that are going to come in and get the product. We had put separation between people. We had put little plastic shields up before we even needed to. And then when right. CDC started coming out and saying, hey, you need to do this, you need to do this, we're like, check, check, already done. Oh, mm -hmm. here's your, oh, you want us to hang this paper on the wall so the employee knows? Cool. Thank you for giving us the official form. You can come check out our facilities. They're, they're dialed in. My sales are doing awesome right now when other people, and, and I feel bad for the companies that aren't doing well, obviously. There's some industries that aren't, but I can tell you out of the nine factories that we have that all make stainless steel products, skylights, tubular skylights, all your venting products, we are, we are having record, record months right now. And my employees are busting their ass to do that. And that's because of teamwork that they, they're prepared. They were prepared for this. Yeah. They didn't well, know it comes, it comes down from leadership, right? When leadership is prepared, you, you hear all the time with companies, it's like, oh, my employees yeah. suck. That means you suck as a leader, by the way. You suck. <laughs> you suck, right? Yeah. And, and, and it's always, when somebody says that to me, it's like them, they're screaming, I am, I am not a well-conditioned uh, or trained leader, right? Or I can never get good help. Yeah, I can never get good help. You know, yeah. how, do you, how do you do that, right? So, so we're so in alignment on that stuff. And, I, and I've seen, you know, your company, I've, you know, Kevin is doing really well. Um, I believe that, that all of this is going to snap back third quarter. We had like, you know, what, a 30% drop in GDP yeah. uh, for obvious reasons, you know, travel industry. There's a whole bunch of people that did poorly, but I believe it was a false, it's a false bottom, right? It was a false, it's a false deal. And I think the third quarter, fourth quarter next year, uh, infrastructure plans, all that other kind of stuff is going to be, it, people need to be prepared just like they needed to be prepared for the dip and for this un, uh, yeah. you know, unplanned for event. You need to be prepared for when this thing snaps back and, and is snapping back. Like you go out on any freeway, I'm flying all over the place and, and seeing everywhere. It's, it's not that slow out there, right? Yeah. There's people that are doing business and you need to be prepared. The other thing that you need to be prepared for, tell me what your feedback is on this, is for large companies to start to shrink down um, because their upper management, middle management is starting their own companies. I think we're about to see the biggest boom in small business startups that this country has ever seen, that the world has ever seen. And if you're in that boat, you got to prepare for it. Go ahead. Yeah, I, don't, I don't disagree with you at all. I mean, as far as my company goes, we run a very lean company because we run it um, with obviously our core values. That's most important, right? We yeah. run it off of our core values and we have to wear a lot of hats. There's times that we were busier and sometimes we're a little slower, but we don't have a slow season, even though people say, oh, you're a cyclical business. No, we need to build product, build inventory. We need to ship the product. We're constantly, constantly busy. But what we don't overstaff because if you overstaff, then all of a sudden you're having to let someone go. And then once you start letting people go, it's almost a morale killer for the team because they got, they got, they got used to Susie or Billy, who was their fun coworker, who's no longer there, but they haven't seen a decrease in sales. So they're cur they don't understand why this individual is no longer working there. So if you can start with a smaller team and then grow that team to the appropriate size for your sales, you're in a much better position because at the end of the day, when shit does go south, you don't have to go, all right, which, which one of those, the weakest link do I got to get rid of? Cause you right. know what? You shouldn't have a weak link. Yeah. You shouldn't, shouldn't have a weak link solid, and you should be, and, and that's what scalable means, right? Scalable means that you're prepared mentally. Like, you know, everybody's so good, you know, in, you're even in your book, right? You've got your tactical guide, but so few people are good at the strategic side. To, to be ready for these things and to watch and to have numbers immediately feeding back. It, it's a world of competition, you know, yeah. it's a world of competition and you've got to be the best prepared that you possibly can be. And that's why I think everybody should have your book the, uh, because it helps you be more prepared for the things that are coming. Right. And, and I can tell you, like, I've sold thousands. Of, so the book was released um, March, right. Yeah. As COVID hit. And I got so many phone calls as soon as because we had a little marketing campaign and everyone's like, oh, what a terrible time to release a book. I feel so bad for you. I'm like, don't feel bad for me. The only thing that's not happening is all my public speaking events. They've all been postponed. They're not canceled, right? Right. They don't really get canceled. They get postponed. And then you have to get after it once things open back up. But a lot of people just sat home and read because they, yeah. they, they, they were done with Netflix or they've already 
binge watch every show. So all of a sudden my book sales, I sold thousands and thousands of these books. And then also I started getting, you know, DMs and people hitting me up. be like, oh, you know, I was in the Navy. I was in the Army. I really appreciate that. You're helping me get back to where I should have. I should have never let myself go. And that's the whole point of the book. Right. Listen, not, not everyone's going to read this book and go, oh, wow, that's a, you know, I can't believe we're still fighting the war on drugs. That's a waste of time. Sure, whatever. Go fuck yourself. I don't really right. care. The <laughs> point of it is I want, you, I want you to read this book and go, you know what? I can be... I can get myself to be bulletproof, whatever that means in your world. You need to get to be your best self, just like the shirt says, everyday GSD. Yep. I love it. And it's so in alignment. Everybody hears me say it constantly. I'm not, you know, one of the things that, that you can do to be popular out there and to get lots of followers and lots of views and other, other things is to, is to feed people's weakness, you know, and, and to let them think that there's some sort of an easy pill. And, um, you know, and that's why I think you and I bonded so well is because there's nothing easy about anything. Losing isn't easy, right? Ah. Going out of business isn't easy. Um, you know, so putting in the effort, the energy into your body, into your mind, into your spirit, into your, your financial position, into your personal relationships, that's not easy, but it's worth it. Right. Right. And being go ahead. Yeah. yeah. I was just saying, you remember we were on stage and that guy asked me, he goes, he goes, what do you do when your employee just messes everything up? And, you know, I'm so mad at night. I can, I can barely even eat my dinner. And I said, did you die? Right. He goes, no. <laughs> I'm like, so what's the problem? Wake up the next day, fix whatever needs to be fixed, and get shit done. And, it's and not a popular about, message, bro. Yeah. Stop worrying about yesterday. Take care of today and tomorrow. Yeah. It's, it's not a popular message. I mean, you have entire organizations, you have entire movements right now that are being built around feel sorry for yourself. Yeah. You know, if you don't like stuff and, and that, and, and again, I go back to your book, I go back to the message of personal responsibility. It's just not in vogue right now. It's not in vogue, but it's still the thing that let's say that this entire co uh, country devolves into some form of Marxism, socialism, communism, right? Eventually throughout history, throughout the entire history of the world, that system doesn't work. And it creates a ton of misery and a ton of pain and a ton of death and a ton of starvation and a ton of trafficking and a ton of abuse, right? And, and so the, di the only difference in those systems is the amount of time that the citizenry puts up with it, okay? So, so regardless of whether that devolves and everybody gives into the pity parties and, and, and feeding people's weakness, it will devolve into that. And eventually who's going to lead it back out of that is going to be who? You. The people that are prepared, right? Prepared. The people 100%. that are prepared. And, and so it, cause it will, it will end, it will be miserable. It will be terrible, or we will uh, um, adjust. And maybe for the first time in the history of any empire ever learn from history <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and go, no, I, I mean, I see where we're going here, but I kind of don't like it. And I could look to as recent as Venezuela and I could see that, oh my God, what, Really? People are breaking into zoos to kill zoo animals to eat and feed their family? Huh, maybe that's not something that I want to do with this country, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so where do you think we're going, man? Um, I don't want to, I, I, I brought you on to hear you talk, not to hear me uh, talk. Oh, that's good. It's all good. <laughs> uh, you know, what? I think we're in, a, we're in a unique situation in our country right now because there's a lot of things going on that, you know, you know the people on the left right now that are going to listen to this are going to be probably blasting me, but... People need to get over all the bullshit, right? What they need to do is focus on the betterment of the country. Listen, I'm not, I'm not a Democrat or Republican. I'm an American. And if right. everyone has that mentality, we're going to be in a much better position. When people talk about racism, listen, don't be a fucking racist. It's a pretty simple thing. It's pretty simple. I just got this T-shirt from this company called Him and Her. Um, I don't know how it's spelled. It's not spelled the same way. It was on Etsy. And literally it says, don't be a racist fucker. <laughs> it, 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 and you know, it, it's like that people are like, well, we need to, we need to make these changes. Well, let's just, let's, let's work on them and make the changes. What do we need to do to make things good? We've got a problem with COVID. Okay. Does that mean everyone needs to wear a mask in every state and every, every part of the country? I don't know. In Indiana, it's not as bad as other states. 
You know, in Montana, it's not as bad as it is in Indiana. I think right. it depends on where you live. So use your head. Don't be an idiot. Right. And, and stop the division, right? Because that's the puppeting that, that I really can't yeah. stand. I mean, I get, it, it's funny to watch people because they, they, they think I'm a, a Republican right wing, you know, person. And then I got people that think I'm a liberal, you know, and, and all, all sides because it's practical application, right? That's why I believe that a, third, a solid third party can evolve through all this garbage is to have somebody that goes back to when the purpose of having a two, a two party was to have some liberal ideas be infected by conservative ideas so that it became better for the citizenry of this country, right? And to have some conservative ideas be infected with liberal ideas so that it was better for the citizenry, right? right. And, yeah, and, and I, talk about, I talk about this in, the, in, the, in my book. Um, after 9-11, and obviously, I'm not giving credit to Bin Laden at all. This guy's the fucking devil. I'm so glad he's dead. But I will say, after the towers got blown up, both towers, and then Washington, and after all the disaster, literally the next day, everybody was all American. American flags everywhere. It wasn't 4th of July. It was every single day. And they were, everyone was supporting the military, supporting their neighbor, helping their neighbor, helping the fireman, helping the police officer, helping the kid go to school, helping the girl who's being trafficked. All right. of, every, everyone was trying to do what the best thing they could do. And now it's like, oh, he said, she said, I don't want to do this because I'm on this side of the fence. Oh, if I do this, then I won't get this vote. If I do this, I won't have this kind of money backing. If everyone just works together for the greater good of what we're trying to do as America, which you know, our parents' parents came here from another country somewhere at some time, unless you're 100% Indian, which right. you and I are not. Right. And you know what? So my, my dad came from Canada. My parents came from Canada. And you know what? They came here and worked their ass off. And so did a lot of other people. So yep. I think it's important that people need to remember that hard work will pay off. And when you help someone, it gets returned to you. And that's not, that's not some hokey stuff. That's real. It's principles like you when you have a principle in life, it's unassailable. Right. And, and this country was built on some principles that have proven itself out over time. Yes, we've we've had slavery in this country, but we worked our way out of it with black and white people working together to end it. Right. There's all of these things that happen because of the principles that this country stands for. And the only people that I stand opposed to at this particular moment in time are the people that are wanting to destroy our, um, our traditions and our principles simply so that they can take over and implement their radical uh, um, agendas so that they can be in power, right? right. They, they just don't want, you know, they feel oppressed or whatever because they're not implementing the, the principles. They're not executing on, on executing on getting better themselves. They're not working. You know, I just saw this article the other day where this uh, Cuban restaurant uh, owner, um, you know, BLM came rolling in there and, and basically just said, look, you guys owe us 1.5% of your sales. Um, you need to hire the people that we tell you to hire. And they're like, we're Cuban Americans. Like we lived under that shit before. They'll come rolling up in here and the entire community rolled around them, you know, to, to say, no, I'm standing up against that. Right. Um, and, and I want to be, you know, and this I, is where, go ahead. Yeah. I, was just saying, I think that there, there's a big confusion because of social media and the, the public media. I think there's a big confusion between protesters and rioters. Hey, listen, there's a reason why you live in America. It's so you can go and protest if you don't think something is fair or if you want to make some sort of change. I mean, it's been happening for years in our country and that's okay. That's great. But that's not rioting. It's the same thing. We were, I was on a, a show the other day. We were talking about cops and this guy asked me, he, I think he was trying to bait me a little bit. And I was like, I got a simple answer for you. There's good cops and bad cops. I've got no room for bad cops and good cops. If it wasn't for good cops, we'd all be fucked. Right. And we're so seeing that. It's, 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 it's that simple. Like, you know what? If you want to protest, I will support you to protest and I support your cause. You want to burn something down in, in, in my neighborhood? It's not happening. But the, the, the confusion is it's the lines are getting blended. The people that are protesting are not the people that are rioting. And no. what happens is it gets infiltrated. And then this organization all of a sudden starts getting a bad reputation because people think it's, it, it's a whole group when really 
it's it's like the good cop and bad cop. You know, I mean, I don't know how big your police department is where you are, but I can tell you with the amount of police that we have here in, in Indiana for the town that I live in, I bet the percent of bad police is very, very, very low. However, there's still a bad apple in there. For sure there is. When yeah. I was in the military, when I was on the teams, there, there were people that were not, the, the, they didn't perform like we did. And you try to weed them out. And when you see them do dumb shit, you go, hey, man, we won't put up with that. And we need more people to just stand up and go, you know what? We're not going to put up with that. We need good cops to tell bad cops not to do this. We need protesters to say, hey, don't, don't, don't do that. We don't need you guys here. We're protesting for this cause. And then I'll support all that. There's no, I, there's I, nobody I that to be the best it can be at all times. hundred percent. And there's okay. nobody that I know. There's nobody that I know that doesn't believe that black lives matter. There's nobody that I hang out with. That's racist. There's nobody, you know, there, there's, there's so many things that, it, that when, then you see uh, BLM, um, you know, in particular where you've got, you know, some of the founders are uh, avowed Marxists and, and then you see people from Antifa going in and they're causing these problems and it gets linked to a really great statement of Black Lives Matter, right? And that we need to protect and step in between anybody that would harm an American, regardless of their skin color, regardless of their, their uh, rate of pay, regardless of where they live, that's our duty, right? Yeah. That is part, that is an American principle, right? right? And, and so you see that. And, and so we've got to, that's what I'm, I'm really pushing hard for is that people just, just stand up, like stand up, you know, obviously yeah. protect the, any sort of uh, damage being done to our black community, uh, to our Hispanic community, you know, whites now are being attacked, um, you know, in, in, you know, in, with impunity, like there's all these things and we just got to stop the violence. Yeah, I think it was a it was a saying at the airport used to use it. Uh, see something, say something. I don't remember mm -hmm. something like that. But it, it, it's true. Like if you're at your house and you see your neighbor's house getting broken into, you, do you go back in your house and shut your door? Well, maybe if you're some old person that can't protect themselves, but call nine one one. Yeah. Or you go, go help your fucking neighbor, regardless of what color they are. Right. Your neighbor. Right. You know. Yeah, and and we have if, the Second if, Amendment if, for a reason. If we all, if we all, yeah, right. If we all stuck <laughs> together, regardless of what color we are, we would be, we would be so much more in a better position in our country right now. And I was starting to say this, you know, when I, when I used to travel a lot overseas, people would say, oh, the, the rest of the world looks at us like we're a bunch of goofballs. And I would say, no, that, that's an opinion that you have. The rest of the world wants to come here and be Americans. Yeah. It's always somebody who doesn't travel that says that shit. Yeah. Like go to Africa and see if anybody thinks that we're silly. You know yeah. what I mean? Anywhere I in Africa, that. pick when anywhere. I, when I, when I climbed Kilimanjaro, every single one of the porters that, that were working with us, which were all got great guys. And I made a bet that I would carry all my own stuff, but I still had the porters cause they needed to get paid. But these guys hung out with me. So I actually ended up staying with them going up the mountain and it was a blast. But yeah. I could tell you at the end, they were like, how can you take me to America? I was like, I'd love to have you come. You guys are awesome. Yeah. And, and it is, I mean, it's, it makes this, this, what makes America great is our immigrants. It's our, it's the people that come here. It's what the country's built on. It's what we're built on. I'm an, I'm a, the, the, the offspring of an immigrant. You are too. Like we all are, like you said earlier yeah. in the show. So, yeah. so I love it. And that's why I love, I'm doing these kinds of shows where, you know, people don't, you know, cause you get, there's a really loud minority and I don't mean minority by skin color because everybody that knows me knows if you make a judgment on somebody else because of the color of their skin, you are a fucking idiot. Okay. Yeah. So you should be punched in the face. You should be punched in the face multiple times. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if you make that kind of decision, but, but ultimately, you know, we have to realize that there's a small minority of people that are being really loud and they're getting all the airways. That's not reality unless we allow it to infect us, right? right. When you have the wall of moms that's standing, be, you know, that has good people behind them, they're there for good reasons in their heart. They're there for good reasons. They don't want to see their sons or their daughters or, or black, white, Hispanic, Asian, whatever it is, be damaged, but they're being used as props by people who do want to burn down the buildings and, and, and ruin people's livelihoods and that kind of stuff. We have to stop being useful idiots. 100%. You know, it'll be interesting 
come November, what changes happen? Um, if, if the administration doesn't change, does a lot of the changes, the, 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 the bad part of what we're seeing in America, do those changes just get fixed and go away? Or is it all a political, hey, we're doing this, the left, the leftist is doing this, the right side is doing this. And, you know, I, I go back to come back to America, come back to Americans. Let's work together. There's for every problem. And, you know, this is this is a fact. I've been saying this. I've been saying this forever. Every problem has a solution. Yep. So you're telling me you come, you have, you're telling me there's a problem out there and the top of our country, the top of our country, the highest of command, we can't figure that shit out. Yeah. I don't, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying I'm it either. It. I'm not <laughs> buying it either. It's not, it's not true, you know? Not true. And, yeah. And that's the, that's the model that we're being told because it, you know, honestly, like if I'm in the media business, I'm looking for eyeballs. I'm going to say the most ridiculous shit that I possibly can to get the biggest idiots that are, that believe all things are either right or all things are left. Yeah. I'm going to do the best that I can. And so you see the de devolution, right? The devolution of people's mentality because they're just getting that string of idiocy yeah. from somebody who needs your eyeballs to be there to sell you some soap. Yeah, it's like the weatherman who's, you know, he's reporting a hurricane that's coming and they, they you don't see on this side, there's a huge fan and he's holding on like this. And he's like, <laughs> the weather's coming, the, the storm is and, blowing away. And then you see a guy and his, his wife walking with their dog right by him. The, <laughs> right by him. <laughs> like, like, that's going like, oh, what's that guy? He's, he's holding on to the tree. He's like, what cameras, are are, cameras are a hell of a drug, aren't they? What are we doing here? What are we doing here? Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I mean, that, that's, my, that's, my, that's my take on all that. But, uh, yeah. you know, when I, when I wrote the book, when I put the book together, my goal was to hopefully change one person's life, right? Mm. That was, that was the, the, the goal. And I can tell you, I've gotten so much positive. I, you know, I got a couple people that said, well, what the hell is that? That's bullshit. Uh, I don't like the cover. You know, that's whatever. I've... I've gotten so much positive uh, reviews that people reached out to me and said, hey, you know what, thank you. You know, the everyday GSD tagline, my motto, people are like, man, that's awesome. I really, I, I, you know what, you know, you don't have to get up at four o'clock in the morning to be an all-star, but right. if you get up at six and you need to get up a little earlier, you know, set your timer, just start doing it. Make the changes you wanna do. You wanna quit smoking, you know what? Slow down smoking, then quit. Depends on, you know, surround yourself with people that don't smoke. It's Fine. not rocket science. It's not. It's not yeah. all. You want to lose weight? You know what? Eat less, work out more. Yep. Amen. It, that's, that's every diet book in every bookstore that yeah. you're ever going to go to. Yeah. yeah. I was listening to a podcast the other day. It was uh, Cleared Hot, Andy Stump, uh, who was, oh, you, you, you met him. He was at yeah. the, yeah. Um, hopefully, I'm supposed to be on his show pretty soon, so. I'll, I'll keep you posted on that. We're, Please. we're, trying, to, we're trying to coordinate that. But he, he said it was, I think he said the other day on one of his shows, he was talking about, it's not a diet. It's a, it's a, it's an eating plan. It's like, right. what's your, what's your plan? He said it's something like that, but it, it made sense to me. Cause I'm like, everyone's like, Oh yeah, I can't eat that. I'm on a diet. Well, you, you shouldn't eat that cause it's shit. Right. <laughs> you shouldn't have five donuts and then complain to me that you're, you're overweight. I mean, right. <laughs> yeah. Stop, you know, stop being, stop waiting around for a, for a, uh, um, an antidote to this thing and be the antidote. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Be part of the, be part of the solution, not part of the problem, whatever that means to you. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Well, um, we're kind of rounding out the corner. How can people get a hold of you? Uh, social media is the easiest way. Uh, right. just Darren Bebo, D A R I N B I B E A U. Uh, that's my Instagram. That's my LinkedIn. That's my Facebook. Uh, Facebook, it's Darren Bebo official. Um, so that's the best way to reach me. And then the books on Amazon, or you can go to my website, DarrenBebo.com. That's awesome, man. And, uh, and I highly recommend everybody follow and, and buy his book. It's a, it's a really great read. It's not, it's not just, you know, your, your dry sort of thing. There's some great stories, um, practical application, it's just more of what you need to be able, it's just another uh, tool in your tool belt, another bullet in your, in your gun for you to be able to advance your life, for you to be able to uh, approve or improve your own position by the one thing that you have control over. And that is you, your beliefs, your behavior, and your outcomes. 
And so uh, I highly suggest everybody goes and gets the book. Any parting shots, any, any pieces of wisdom that you want to leave any, everybody with? Um, I always say if you, if, you, if you buy the book, make sure you leave me a good review. And if you don't like the book, then use it to poke your neighbor in the eye who you don't like. There you go. I love that. I love <laughs> yeah. that strategy. You know six P's, man. Everyday GSD and six P's, simple things. There's a lot of tips and tricks in this book that I've learned throughout my journey in life. But those are a couple, those are a couple big ones I like to leave everyone with. Proper planning prevents piss poor performance and everyday GSD just gets shit done. Set your goals and accomplish them. You'll, you'll sleep better at night. I love that, brother. Well, thank you for taking some time. Um, having a great conversation about uh, relevant things. Uh, your book applies, I think, as principles do. They apply to uh, any time frame, any situation that you find yourself in. And um, just wanted to say thank you for being on the show. So thank you, everybody, for being here. I know this is the middle of the day. A lot of you guys are going to catch up on this tonight um, or tomorrow or on, the, the, on YouTubes and the iTunes and the iHeartRadios of the world. Um, and thank you again for being here, for supporting the Bald Avenger Show as much as you do, for sharing this content out, for being a voice in the wind of nonsense these days, for being part of Misfit Nation. Um, you know, those of you that are part of Misfit Nation, that's awesome. You guys know how great it is. Those of you that aren't, go to Misfit Nation page on Facebook. There's no selling. There's no nothing. It's just gathering of people that are uh, like-minded, have gone through some hard things and want to support each other. So thanks for being here. The next show that we're going to have is most likely going to be on Thursday. Um, I'm bringing in a nurse that's been smack dab in the middle of COVID uh, she's going to reveal some amazing things. Um, she's also a nurse that works with us at CERT Ministries um, on rescues and identifying trafficked people. 86%, Darren, 86% of all trafficked, abducted uh, uh, children end up going through a hospital and, and, um, going and being seen by a physician. And so she teaches people how to, to see those, those tendencies and those, those things. So she's an amazing guest. Uh, can't wait for everybody to get to meet her. Thank you again, Darren. Um, every day, get shit done. Every day, the book. Back to the Bulletproof. Back to Bulletproof. Go get it right now and, um, and go to his link and follow him. Thanks, and brother. Thank, thank you, brother. I appreciate everything you're doing out there. Much awesome, love. Man. Not next time we got to do a, a warrior uh, event here as soon as everything opens back up. We will for sure. You All will right, definitely be there. All right, brother. Love you, pal. Back at Bye, you. Miss Fit Nation.